गाइस वेलकम टू अनदर अमेजिंग एपिसोड ऑफ लिमिटलेस आर पॉडकास्ट विद वेस्ट साइड नाउ टुडे आई हैव समबडी दैट आई हैव ह्यूज रिस्पेक्ट फॉर आई लव कॉमेडियंस एंड अ फीमेल कॉमेडियन बॉश आई एम द हैप्पीएस्ट टू हैव यू टुडे शी इज अ स्क्रीन राइटर प्रोड्यूसर एक्टर शी हैज फाउंडेड अ राइटिंग स्टूडियो कॉल्ड मोटर माउथ दैट फोकसेस ऑन flawed and role women now come on we all know how much i love that we have sumuki suresh in the house I'm clap for myself <laughs> <laughs> babe i love you thank you i love you because you know uh you have just broken that mold you're like boss i do my own thing yeah i right. create the moments i am the moment <laughs> oh i am the moment is a great line for yeah. uh, motor mouth yeah what is motor mouth ah, she motor mouth is the moment that's nice <laughs> and what's amazing is that you started off with uh uh i think learning nutrition food science management <laughs> and working as a chef yeah to today right here where this journey is incredible because you know you've you've just grown as a person and as this content creator writer producer actor blah 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 so much respect first of all i am on samira reddy's podcast <laughs> i am in front of you i must say that i know how i, I don't know how uh, ass licking this will sound <laughs> i don't know i'm not aware yeah, but yeah. i'm su- i'm such a fan not only of instagram way before i am the girl who knows the lyrics of thoda sa pyar hua hai thoda hai baaki yeah but you, i heard I, you love bollywood i man. love bollywood i and, seen... and her dream is karan johar <laughs> see there are two <laughs> dreams i am a karan johar heroine but i will I, i will always be in a film by vikramaditya motwani oh my like god that listen the, you yeah. your vision board is very clear yeah my vision board is very clear <laughs> it's true and what's amazing is that um you have done a show that has got seven nominations pushpavali yeah yeah uh, from what i hear the character is really quirky having a crush and you the thing she does around it quirky is a very <laughs> sweet word for <laughs> and then so sweet as someone has described you know here. what i like i love real content i think that's what i keep trying to do yeah. is really get there to be relatable because deep down is actually who we are and mm. outside the portrayal is extremely different and yeah. the expression of comedy especially at least what i feel comes from very deep space it comes from black humor maybe anxiety yeah. maybe <laughs> maybe really trying to like make people laugh because dude life is hard yeah uh, so where does your inspiration to create that content come from when i started doing comedy i wasn't sure if it was comedy or not because when i first auditioned for the comedy show i thought it was a play so then they were like oh we're going to give you a word and then you have to come up with like a scene and i was very really like wow abhi theater wale bhi lazy ho gaye wo bhi theater line nahi likh rahe apne hame karna padega so i had a great time and i'm like cool up mujhe character bata dena i'll do a play and I, i was working for a food lab at that time so then they were like okay cool uh this is an improv show this is not a play i said oh what is an improv show they got very upset why didn't you read up about us i'm like where to read now it's not like you guys are i don't know I, you know it's not there's nothing on google for me to read whatever it's a side story but i still for the in my head i don't see myself or i don't see if i'm doing comedy or i'm specifically coming with the agenda of comedy but i'm fun for sure so i'm able to translate you the, are fun. yeah <laughs> that i've realized that people aware. love you ha so that awareness <laughs> of fun to funny has happened and also the, as as you said fun funny comes from such a space of anxiety and it comes from such a space of just general uh sadness that is around or just moroseness or it also comes from hormones oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh hit show right now her, her stand up comedy show with is uh, called hormonal mm. <laughs> and nobody talks more about hormones than me cuz i am mad hormonal and i'm oh, so man. honest about it because i'm like babe how do people do it how are they consistent how do they not <laughs> rave rant cry howl i mean my husband literally sometimes comes and says is it a good day to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> Which day is it? Is it before the period, after the period, during the period, or in between? You know what I mean? It's like every yeah. there's there's a moment for women. I mean, literally PMS, post, in between, beginning, and I think the older you grow, I think the worse it gets. So here's the thing: you have experience with hormones. I had none, mm. literally none, because <laughs> during the pandemic, I wanted to see because I didn't. Get, I got my period, then I, then it never came. Mm. So then I was like, okay, where is it? So then during Kahe. pandemic, uh, yeah, and, and then I got very <laughs> used to it. Where women were complaining about PMS, you know, like be- belly pains or this pain, that pain. I had no experience at all. So I was like, okay, this is sad. I should at least find out why is it that I'm not getting it. And during the pandemic, I met my gynecologist. And when I met her, 
we did a, she's like let's do a hormone profile because I was also working out I started working out and I started eating better no result I don't even think I have a metabolic rate I don't even have no rate it's just food went in went out and things just kept gaining itself in the body I don't know what was happening she said oh your home you, you seem like it might be hormonal imbalance so why don't we get it checked got it checked and and the word came to you estrogen there, there is none yeah. by uh, my uh, female st- uh, fsh my female stimulating hormone was 0.6 the range starts with one samira and and i cannot even imagine what you must have gone through because then it's like okay how do i begin from yeah. here oh, it's so sad also i mean it's funny but it's also so sad that there's just no amount of we are supposed to be educated progressive women who have no clue that lack of hormones may also lead to a certain kind of we've been told so much that tumne khana khaya hai tum ye ho tum wo ho like there have been such simple solutions to an question that's so complicated and there's just no so no Are money hormones in female health crazy crazy complicated yeah like i have this thing called prolactinoma which is like a hormone which uh, is uh, inversely re- related to your dopamine so when my prolactin goes high i start oh feeling God. low oh <laughs> girl you God. understand what prolactin and, buddies <laughs> and and the fact that you've created like a show around it yeah i'm telling you if i came from that show i'd be like woo 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 it, because i'm just it, it really was which is very surprising because right after the show i had different kind of people coming and like there were the women who were going through the ivf they were like hey man we relate and then there were the young girls who were like we have no clue which is also just that there's no money in female health or f- v- reproductive health in awareness fact, yeah, exactly. or conversation exactly i just did none. a post recently saying please go check your hormones from time yeah. to time at whatever age you are because prevention is massively important absolutely that being said i'm sure you have i mean does your mother keep asking you but when are you going to get married you know she really went cuz you come from this you know like a proper like proper. a hardcore south hardcore indian family man. i come from a south indian family yeah. i mean i got married at 36 and my parents oh, got this. fed up of asking me this is okay. like so before i met my husband i actually started looking at arranged marriages this is the top of my career because What? yeah because i just wasn't finding the boy i'm sorry you did dur se pass bula le and arranged marriage that guys nobody was coming up to me I swear it'd be like oh there are boys everywhere I'm sure they love you I'm like oh but well, they're not saying it because maybe you you know it's intimidating you know especially for someone like you who is successful you know you're well known you know and I'm sure like you get a lot of guys asking you out No what nan go on babe. please you are telling me your dating scene is my like my dating scene is um <laughs> <laughs> just a laugh. She's just like laughing all day. I can't wait to hear this. First of all, if your husband you found him at thirty six, and if that's how adorable he is, it, once again, so we are ready to the rescue. She's like, There is a future. Don't worry. Babe, so I had my second child at forty one. Okay, this so. is definitely a great. Yeah, so we're good to go. The mom asking, I think she's just given up now. It all comes down to the pandemic time because. At once pandemic started, I think she she was done battling with me because before that she didn't even know that I was doing comedy for the longest time. I hid it from I, her. I read that that yeah. you said that your parents were not really not, and still not crazily into it, not but me. part of it. Yeah, <laughs> now they're not crazily into it, but part of it. Till 2017, I had told them that I was in Bombay working for a food safety training company because I used to work for a food lab, right? So I said that hey, I'm shifting to Bombay because the company is sending me. They're like, okay, company is sending me, and in the evenings I'm at open mic at restaurants and all. They're like. Why are you at restaurants? I said, no, I'm doing food safety training, right? So in the evening only everyone <laughs> is coming, no, to train. So <laughs> nonsense, I'm speaking. So I've lied also to my mother so much that I think I'm very sure she knows because the first time I went, of course, I'm to, sure she yeah. knows. Who doesn't know you? Exactly. Yeah. So then, because the first time I went to college also, which was in Chennai, I had lied and gone because she, I was work, I was studying in Nagpur, and I said she's not going to let me go. I'm going to go finish the entrance exam and come. And then my mom's like, you're not going to get in because she was just being passive aggressive. I went, I got my admission done i took my father finished the admission wow. and then i called her saying it's done and she didn't speak to me for like good one month i'm like i have to go listen quick. my parent uh, my dad didn't speak to me when i signed my first film <gasps> he was really upset because i gave up um a scholarship to canada i was doing extremely well with my studies that time and uh, he just couldn't believe it he's like you gave up this for god god to movie <laughs> Same dad, same dad. Who, by the way, freaked out when I did a movie with Anil Kapoor and Sanjay Dutt. He's like, da 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 da. Same dad. Two years later, 
I did a movie with Chiranjeevi Garu. <laughs> Bus, that's it. Life yeah. was made. My dad went. He was boasting to all his friends. Samira has done a movie with <laughs> Junior NTR. Chiranjeevi. And my dad was so proud. I was like, man, that sucks because like f- three years ago, you didn't even care about <laughs> yeah. this. But that's a South Indian thing. Anyway, I think it is. Yeah. Coming back to, to your dating. dating yeah, yeah. I'm dying to hear. So I, because I got into dating when I uh, when I reached thirty. I actually was not dating in my 20s because I had one boy I'm like this one I want I'll figure it out. It was that one investment that return investment I wanted. It didn't happen of course. Cuz 20s are the worst thing to happen to anyone. I don't know why we don't skip to 30s directly. <laughs> Trust me the 40s are even better. Yes. I'm <laughs> genuinely dating. I'm that. the poster child of saying please welcome to the fun side <laughs> because 20s was not the best. But dating in general like do you ask the guys out? Do they ask you out? How does it work? So with the apps it, when apps, you, yeah wow. it all started start with the I apps. went past the apps yeah phase. but the I apps is did. the worst there are some apps that the boys make the first move and then there are some apps where the girls make the first move we are fundamentally also just like n- n- none of us are taught dating so abhi dating aap de diye aapko wow. abhi to you wow. talk and you're like let's meet for coffee there is no chemistry of course there's no chemistry because very few people have the capacity to do banter on an app it's a it's you hmm. know it has its own set of training going on so apps happened apps was not good and apps also became a great recruitment agency for me because a lot of people <laughs> like you're like hey we are not able to reach out to you on on your motor mouth ka instagram crazy. handle so can we reach out oh to you God, so but you got to give it to boys boys has a level As long as you're doing business, <laughs> yeah. business of comedy, yeah. Oh my god, comedy. it just sounds suddenly it's like <laughs> business on Tinder. I, no. <laughs> I don't have the guts. But like it. any like funny moments, I mean, of dating. Uh, so after I pretty much got off apps, um, I remember. Uh, I think. This was this was one of the dates which happened where this guy was like this was very interested and he was so nice he was like let's go for a afternoon coffee first or like an afternoon drink and I was like oh that's very nice that's fun okay cool so and I was really looking forward to it and I met him and I remember we sp- we sp- started speaking for like five ten minutes and then eventually this boy just went ahead and started asking me about this comic called Biswa Kalyan Rath. Mm. Okay, he's a very good comic. He's an engineer, and boys love him. And for the next forty-five minutes, he just asked me about Biswa. <laughs> I said so this was a fan moment <laughs> yeah, for somebody else through you yeah. through a oh, date of love. And then I was I met Biswa and I was like Biswa why did I go through a date where someone was asking oh me about God. you? It's like somebody coming and dating me and asking me about Anil Kapoor for one <laughs> <Yeah>. hour. <laughs> I remember very clearly and I told Biswa I said I don't know why this boy kept asking me about you and he's like babe he engineer I said yeah, yeah. he lonely uh, I'm oh like I don't my. know he's like he my fan. And it just Sorry maybe he me. wanted him not you. <laughs> not even maybe hundred percent wanted to. He would pay top dollar for me to be replaced by Biswa Kalyan Rath on that table wow. while we while he was having orange juice and I was pretending to have sangria which was clearly grape juice. Okay? Oh my god! So this was genuinely. But can I really be angry at this date because I'm like he's he's a fan fan of my friend. Mm. So I'm like him hey, and then I love speaking about Biswa. I'm like yeah Biswa so funny. He behaves like this. We are fifteen like, minutes into my morning about Biswa. I'm like why am I talking about Biswa? <laughs> well at least you had a better experience than me. I had a guy who I actually. went on a date with and so i uh, uh on screen i had to wear a lot of stickies because oh. i'm not that big chested okay and I, i had this size which was normal in real life and then i had with like really <laughs> big ones on screen so i went on a date with them and i went in my normal clothes and wearing my normal bra and i swear a little bit into the thing he said wow you look really different in real life and i know what he was talking about he's like you, you know you look really different on screen <laughs> like i think he really expected that and i was like <laughs> All right then. Sorry <laughs> to sorry, let you uh, uh, down. For your dating space, there was no, there were no apps, right? It was no. Yeah, please. So like, so, how was the? Because so it's always friends setting you up. It's man. always it was friends. It was old fashioned friends setting you up. But I was very uncomfortable. To to be honest, for the longest time, I just never dated because I was working all the time. That's why actors date actors on set. Because where are oh, you exposed? I mean, yeah. I finally met Akshay on set. How did you? Uh, he just came uh, on his bike because I was using his bike for the shoot, huh. and I said, "Screw the bike, I want the guy." So yeah, he came <laughs> on a bike. I was like, "That's it," and I asked him out. But I coming to the whole body thing, as I said, like body for me was a big, big thing because I always felt. so conscious in the beginning maybe that's why today thanks to social media i love you social media because it has allowed me to just say dude i am always going to battle body issues yeah, i'm yeah. always going to feel like this and i did it for the longest time for films yeah and for people but today not anymore 
and I think that's where I have so much respect for you because you write and you think from a normal, real, flawed woman point of view, which is the reality, man. Yeah, that's yeah. who we are today. Yeah. And you think about that. But do you feel for body like positivity? Do you have you ever battled anything like that yourself? You know, I I I still struggle with body positivity in in any form because I think what I'm not. Uh, it's very confusing, right? But beauty standards are so confusing that, okay, here you are. This is pretty. This is not pretty. This is what it is. Well, who, who's, who's setting these yeah, damn standards? Yeah, and my bigger problem was that I wasn't able to come grasp the thought of what is pretty, what is not pretty. Because... So you make your own pretty. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, it eventually reached that stage where I'm like, I'm just going to write for myself. Because by the time someone's going to write for a big girl, it's going to take a long time. But... Just, you know, something as simple as a big girl maybe working out, not to lose weight, but just to work on her body itself is such a big problem. Because I'm yeah. like, when I started working out, they're like, oh, now you want to become thin? Is that what you're doing? I'm like, what are you doing? Listen, why, guys, why? I'm sorry to break this, but a lot of people on the internet tell me, Samira, I'm so disappointed in you. What? And that word I love because I'm like, so it's really funny because when you, you're right, when you try to talk about fitness, you're like, oh, but aren't you talking about big girl positivity then you're losing weight and then they're like why aren't you losing weight and then you know it's it's always it's, you can't please everybody you can't also please anybody. yeah people will always have an opinion yeah. and they love giving it huh? yeah. even your bhaji wala your yeah, yeah, you know yeah. your driver anybody will come and say acha madam and yeah. and so that's something i guess you always have to battle yeah and especially with big people i mean i know the number of people who have come up to me still come up to me in terms of like oh you know you'll be so you will be so pretty if you lose weight Oy. i'm like why is it a, why is the one word associated Girl, I'm pretty with now. Yeah, yeah like pretty is a very and different women thing. women are the most uh, yeah ladke do oh oh bol boy are the, I like white boys boys are just getting wider yeah. and then they're <laughs> protector providers also so strangely hot. enough when men age somewhere at 40 we given them the mantle that they are hot but because yeah. they've got wrinkles around their eyes yeah, and that they, it is they, the experience. but the aging the biggest thing for me is when women are aging we are pulling them down yeah. which is really sucky because I'm yeah. just like that's so rude you know, somewhere I read that you said, uh, I don't want to have kids because I'll mess them up. Yeah, I, I read this and it really stayed with me because, you know, at some level, I actually resonated with what you said because as a mom, I, I think about, uh, you know, they call it uh, generational trauma, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think we can be great parents, perfect parents. Yeah. It's parenting is parenting. Yeah. But why do you feel that you would mess them up? Uh, because my pa when we were being raised, and I have two elder brothers, when we were being raised, money was just not there. So mm. I saw my parents struggle, especially my father's. I mean, now I understand there was mental health. And then my mother was really bucked up. And then she also took over and took care of the family. But for her, her she was told that her stereotypical role was to take care of the house and not take care of the money. So she was going through a lot of learning and unlearning in the middle of no money. Saw both my brothers struggle with that. Saw a family of, like, you know, two parents trying to keep three kids together, educated, give them the best resources. It was just a lot. And I'm like, you know, it's very unfair because I know a lot of my uh, quirks and things are coming from maybe whatever parents, father issue, mother issues or whatever issues I have. But it's very unfair to blame it on them, right? They were just trying to do their best. So I, I, I also know that I come from that major baggage. And, you know, it, it's it's split because also my I have a younger brother who my aunt adopted. And I remember um, eventually my aunt, um, it's, you know, the classic South Indian parents and the family. They are only one TV series. Because <laughs> one auntie is telling another auntie, you know, my, your Sumukhi's mother bought the baby. I'm like, bought the baby? Bought the baby? It's on eBay or what? What anything? No, but the thing is, you're adopting that itself is such a, it's amazing. And I think in India, yeah. I, hopefully that's changing. So much respect for people who adopt, man. I yeah. really feel that it's incredible. Yeah, I so can't I, believe they said that. Yeah, yeah. And and my mother, of course, felt bad. We didn't. I didn't draw, leave my that year or younger brother of mine because he added to it. And I I remember genuinely wanting to blast his face off. But my mother's <laughs> like, no, let's not. He's your younger brother. I'm like, this one's not my younger brother. This one's going through something else. But that also has stayed in my mind where eventually if I do want to become a parent, I'd love to adopt. Because I think my mother did this where mm. he, she conceived and she gave a, uh, gave a son to her own sister. Mm. It's like, it's almost like a, some someone left the family, someone needs to come back to the family. Like yeah. it's 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 yeah. always been in my head that eventually and also thirdly, I've gotten my hormone test done. So you know, I have no AMH. My AMH is like 0.2. Mm. So I have like one fourth of an egg. So it will give birth to half an egg. Oh, so like, listen, you know. You know, the thing is, that's, that's why I say comedy comes in. Huh? 
at the most deepest uh, parts of us, you know, where you know it's it's how you say it. it yeah. It, but it is deep. Yeah. It is painful. Yeah. But the fact that you are accepting it and channeling it and um, expressing yourself yeah. in this way, you have no idea how many women you're talking to right now going through something like this who are listening to you. Who are smiling with you, who are also in pain with you? Yeah, because the and day who I understand. Yeah, you. the day I found out. I mean, until then, even I was like, oh, I'm not sure I'm gonna have kids. The day I found out, I genuinely was upset. I'm like, oh, you know, till now it was the cool thing of I don't want to have kids, mm -hmm. and now it's almost like the universe telling you, babe, you can't have. So that day I was like, oh, so I'm not cool. But you know, to maybe it's uh, crazy, but I do think that um, a lot of things that happened to us from the beginning almost edging to a certain point like for the fact that you had adoption somewhere in your family yeah and it sort of already put you in that position where you understand it yeah and the nuances of what come with it yeah is today maybe going to push you in that direction yeah and like the universe always has some path you know so yeah but, and might as well get a kid that's going through a lot and help it out rather than me going through everything it's, it's, but thank it's, you for sharing it because I, yeah. I touched on it because I wanted to you know just ask you but look about I mean this is such a powerful con conversation and uh, you know it's, it's 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 how sad it is is that i i know you're saying this but it, um, it's amazing how no it's not really spoken about so i don't even know if it's a relatable thought as you're saying it is when they're like no there are people who are relating you know, to this as you said there are a lot of things you take for granted yeah and yeah. Uh, and i do realize that later on when stuff like this happens as i said it's a journey yeah. you know one thing you had told me in the room right now when i spoke about and you said samira you know nobody talks to me about this also is Burnout. Oh yeah, no one speaks to me about burnout. I cannot yeah. tell you. For me, the hottest conversation right now is burnout. As uh, creators, as people who are artistic, uh, even for me, I actually take a step back so often because I am so I'm such an advocate for mental health. So for me, burnout equals how you're feeling and how it is almost pushing you into a hole that you don't want to be in. Hmm. Uh, do you uh, feel that in this creative process that you go through moments like this? First of all, no one approaches or no one speaks to me about burnout because uh, the way I work is I, I love working. So I'm working all the time. I've seen that. Yeah, You're so on. You're I'm on. on. All I'm the on. time. You wake me up, I'm on. Okay. <laughs> which is which is good, which is great. I also see that work ethic or that uh, attitude coming from my mother because my mother also wake her up now, she's on. So I'm like, okay, that's where I've got it from. But again, I think generational trauma sort of you know, comes in there as well. That why is she always switched on that she's ready. But to do take you think over? if you switch off at any point, maybe you'll have to like people? They say people who are continuously busy are, are actually not addressing maybe the hundred percent. And yeah. that's also the, where I talk about bu the burnout because sometimes when burnout happens, you just go into a quiet space and then suddenly everything is like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> Am I here right now? <laughs> is yeah, it making yeah, sense yeah. to me? Yeah. No, I, I think uh, the amount of um, amount of uh, responsibility I've put on, uh, or the amount of uh, what do, what's the word I'm looking for on work and how much of my self worth is on work is supremely high. I don't know. I have no complaints about it. It's not that I'm using it as a crutch, but there is clearly. Um, a space where I have not addressed the quiet. I'm mm -hmm. not comfortable with it. Although I'm getting comfortable now because off late, after I got into therapy, I had to. Because for the longest time I wasn't, but then I, a few of my friends around me went into a certain, um, it went in a certain direction that made me realize that no, I have to get into it. Even if I don't feel it right now, it's clearly going to be preventive. It's a dangerous space because I feel sometimes, especially with social me media, the validation yeah. and uh the constant uh, being on to keep up. Yeah. Because there is that pressure. Yeah. There are two things that, I mean, I take a step back every once in a while. I just disappear and everyone's like, oh God, ready to go. Yeah. I just completely shut off because I need to suddenly uh, assess where I am. And most importantly, as I said, you have to just feel like, okay, this is my comfortable space. Yeah. This is what people think of me. But tomorrow if they cancel me, man, you know what? I'm still this person. I think which is also why if you, even if even in terms of work, I know social media, I know stand up is such an important part. Almost writing took care of it because the moment you become a writer, you have to switch off. Yeah. Because there is no way you can be on social media and do writing as well. So writing requires me to just leave for two weeks because the deadlines are just so high. But then I come back from whatever it is. So it's almost like the the way I have channeled my my work itself, mm. it's making me make sure that I move away. But again, that's also a very lousy explanation <laughs> because writing is also working. So I'm not really getting away from work. I can see my burnout happening very soon. I can I can genuinely see it. But the only thing I'm doing now with it is that I'm going to start being aware of the fact that 
it is going to happen and very small baby steps to prevent it because my mind will go into a full it will go into full protective well, if it ever zone. happens you can call me because I'm Done. the queen of burnout I'm excited <laughs> 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 but the, you know I have to also ask you this that the comedy space uh, is also a, a real space where as you say like um, questioning po- the power of the media what I love is that nowadays in the social media space we are talking about real issues yeah uh, things that you know maybe on the news are just skimmed over yeah uh, things that may be controlled politically, yeah. which yeah. we all know happens. And then I think the comedians and their take on everything come in and just, they just kill it. And that's why people respond to it too much, so much because it's reality. Yeah. It's reality on ground. Yeah. Uh, it's also responsibility in a way. Yeah. Do you feel that pressure? Yes and no. I think in terms of stand-up, and I'm, I also am very safe and selfish like that, is because I want to make sure that I... Be, at least I want to try and be in 20 years uh, an extremely important, powerful person in this universe. And since I'm not from the entertainment industry, it's going to take me more time than the others. It's going to take me speaking to more people, acquainted to more people. So for me to become a producer or a studio, it's going to take a longer time, which is why I calculate my steps very well when I'm like, oh, do you really need to take the stand right now? Mm. And I know that's unfair also because I have the power of, you know, the influencer, Mm. the power of people. But right now, I think that's where I go about it. But uh, the the uh, one of the fun thing I do is that any show and every show that I write or any movie has to have a, a hidden agenda that 100% will be communicated. Like with Pushpavali also, I was very, very clear that I wanted to speak about the fact that just because there is a girl who's insecure about her body, hates herself clearly for it. But she looked at this guy and she's like, oh, this guy is into me. I'm going to just pursue him. And she has no qualms about it. I'm not romanticizing her, but just the fact that a girl can play this I, that's what I wanted. I'm mm. like, if you were comfortable making Shah Rukh Khan dar, and Shah Rukh Khan, Shah Rukh Khan is iconic. I mean, we are no, I'm nowhere close to that. But if you're okay with him being the stalker in dar, and if you're okay with Dhanush being a stalker in Ranjana, then I think you should be okay with a girl <laughs> being a stalker and not make her vampish. Like if you yeah. see the show also, she's very dumb. <laughs> she's an iconically dumb character. She's so stupid. One boy looked at her and she's like, that's it. I want my life, life to be about him. But, I'm like, but won't be all that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've done it. See, that's the thing. The number of women who came and I remember articles came out saying that isn't it disturbing that so many women are saying this is relatable I'm like you have no idea what women are enjoying themselves with in their head I'm sure that there's a girl who's looking at her story like 5 billion times a day to see if the guy she's crushing on is yeah, looking at it exactly. okay, it's the truth and also just the fact that <laughs> you know because they're like isn't it irresponsible I'm like look at Pushpavali she's getting the worst treatment even if a girl's thinking of following a also, boy she stop the thing is that I keep saying this when you're putting out like a story it doesn't necessarily have to appeal or have you accept or say I you know I put my stamp of approval on it Yeah, it is something out there if you like it great if you don't just go past it go to the next one it's okay with yeah. that and also for me content wise more than a political stand which is of course equally important I, I do try and see if I can write in the show movie or whatever I put out there is an emotional stand that I have taken mm. like I've taken something like the fact that I can be f- happy and funny as much as I can that's also a statement the fact that I have a writer's room which is filled with mostly women hardly any men but I don't want to make a big deal about it is a statement by itself so yes but where do you draw the line because I sometimes sometimes feel with you know content and comedy you can sometimes just you know there's this whole tussle between how, how are we crossing that line and and even I think of it 10 times before I write or yeah. put something out. So sometimes in my head, I say things. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's so it, not that politically sounds, yeah, correct. That yeah, sounds yeah. wrong. So where do you think comedians can draw that line? You know, we uh, comedians, and this is a self-assessment thing. Maybe we do tend to be very clear about the voice that we bring. We're so confident about what we're speaking that sometimes we may forget to speak to more people like since comedians become so involved with other comedians so if it's funny then that's what it is so the comedians get together and they're all like a little sesame yeah. of just comedians AIB so, <laughs> sorry I had to say that that's but, like the KJO of comedy <laughs> but speaking to people who are not comedians speaking to uh, interacting with like uh, we were I'm writing a we were writing a character for a show um, uh, and we were writing an LGBTQI uh, plus uh, a character and um, I remember one of my writers, she was, she's from the community and she, the kind of insights she brought, 
I, me as a straight cis woman i can never mm, i can i cannot mm. even imagine yeah. and the fact that i'm saying these words i didn't even know these words is very recently that i've been educated that this is what it is there's so much to learn it's also dude which is where it comes down to diversity everyone says mm. diversity is an mm. agenda but diversity is the most obvious thing to do it's a learning yeah there are so many things i mean yeah. i know people also make fun of like you know gen z and gen this and all i'm like dude i'm learning yeah i don't even know half of what these words they mean know i don't more. know yeah. what you know so many Many diverse communities represent, and that's where I start. Like, so I come from the whole school of I learn from all types of yeah. collaborations that yeah. I do. Uh, I do. I never ever look at the numbers. I look at the people. I'm like, man, if they are rocking, I need to learn from them, and that's where it it comes down to. Like for you, from you. Comedy is my big thing. So you <laughs> know I'm what you're learning ha- from you, you know. I feel like what this uh, uh, very obviously leads to is that you should definitely do an open mic. I think we had a chat about this. I don't know. What, see, I'll tell you. I'm not coming I'm like, from. I'm like shaking right now. You don't understand that I'm not being nice here. I'm not being sweet here. It's a clear agenda. Because if you do comedy and if you do stand up, you will have audience, and you can easily fill. Oh my seaters, god! You know I love which comedy. Helps other <laughs> comics like us fill up like, our. I'm very focused, yeah. <laughs> Samira is going to get me those numbers. Yeah. <laughs> you know the thing is that in 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 all the content I write, which I do myself, I direct, yeah. write, and I produce. Not the word. It's on my phone. It's not much of production. It's produ- <laughs> hey, production. Hey, production or production? Just But because I, there's no spot that that yeah. doesn't mean it's not production. <laughs> so many people say, "Oh my God, Samira, your content so good." So do you have a team? And I'm like, "It's Team Sam." <laughs> there's nobody oh my else. God. Team Sam is your company. Come <laughs> oh God, on, she's a starter so company. Cool. Starter company. Come on. But you have to do. You have to do stand up. But I so love funny. comedy and I love it. But to stand up in front of people, See, I was inspiring. <laughs> podcast is just inspiring. My own limitless podcast is inspiring me only. Five open mics. <laughs> That's the deal. Okay. All right. I think we need to end this. Uh, in the next three months, <laughs> five open mics. If you bomb all of them, then you definitely made for comedy. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Listen, before we uh, say bye to all our amazing listeners, you are a bundle of energy. You have amazing presence. You are confident, and you're pretty much like. This bombshell. So I want you to just give one piece of advice to anybody out there who's right now in this position that is a bit like you know, like wow, where do I get my inspo from? I don't know if it's inspiring or I don't know if it makes any sense, but most of the things that seem very daunting or seem like impossible, it comes down to just doing it. I I don't know. I speak for a bunch of women who are around me. Is that a lot of women have a lot of dreams, and I specify men, uh, women, because men have. That's fine. You guys are fine. Okay, you guys are doing just fine. But the girls, on the other hand, have so many <laughs> dreams in their heads. They have so many things to achieve, and they're like, "But I'm not sure." A big step that really stops us from doing it is to. just the act of doing it and also just to be absolutely fine with failing mm-hmm. because look at the boys around you they fail and they're so cocky and happy about it <laughs> it's time we do that too we fail we're like ah oh, it's a, you know just water off ducks back i'm going to do one more thing <laughs> i love that love so that so just if you a do it b fail it it's absolutely yeah, fine it's okay to fail it's, it's, it is it is the right way if you're not failing um, i mean not in 10 standard that stuff <laughs> never know what if you are meant to be bill gates and you fail your 10th boards or you do food nutrition but then you end up being a really comedy. famous comedian sumuki you are everything and more and i've oh, yeah. completely enjoyed this podcast thank you thank you thank, thank you, you for, you. Thank for coming you so here. much for having me thank and you and guys i hope you have loved this podcast of limitless with west side i definitely have Sumuki, so I enjoyed it. First of all, I'm on Sami. <laughs> I'm sitting with Samira Reddy. You have no idea what a um, not making you sound uh, not fun because <laughs> everyone feels like if you're inspirational, you're not fun. It's just such an inspiration. Just the fact that you do what you do is please keep doing because a lot of us are watching it. So excited and can't wait for you to do open mic and can't wait for you to do a dance reel. All well. right. Oh my god. This is like I feel like my interviews just <laughs> just gave her a task list. <laughs> <laughs> this this before burn out finish it <laughs> thank you thank so you, much thank you so and much. guys till our next podcast i'll see you then mm-hmm.